good morning, good afternoon, officially, Kayla. It's four minutes <laughs> for four minutes up to the afternoon. Perfect. <laughs> to uh, well, this probably looks like not even like snow to you. No, it's like not a light really. dusting. Yeah, well, a second ago it was snowing a little bit harder, but yeah, this is nothing compared to Montana. Exactly. It was, we were all complaining about half an inch of snow. Right. <laughs> the song you're talking about here this week is Burn a Little Colder. And as I already told you, like this is a perfect topic. The song is the perfect topic for this kind of conversation. Talk about writing that story. Well, it's a, um, I kind of got the idea just because a lot of times when you're falling in love, it can be a little bit scary and you can definitely have moments where you're like, what am I doing? This is the worst idea ever. Or where like, if you start to feel close with someone, you might get afraid that maybe they're not going to reciprocate that. Or Mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of reasons that you might be like, whoa, this is too fast. Um, and there's also a side of it too, where you were like, well, what if maybe this was like a some sort of like a taboo relationship and so you're like wow I'm really attracted to you but like I wish I wasn't because I can't go there right um so when we were sitting there in the right talking about this emotion we all had experiences that we could draw from where it's just like you have that attraction but for whatever reason you're kind of like okay this is too much for me yeah yeah. um so that was sort of the sentiment behind it and um i had the hook idea for burn a little colder just because i'm obsessed with fire and i thought it was cool um (laughs) so we kind of just we took it and we're like you know what could that mean in a relationship Mm -hmm. yeah and the topic or the, the kind of central idea behind my interviews now is creative courage which for the whole idea is if you are being creative that automatically means making yourself vulnerable, which I think is an act of courage. Yeah. Because you're having to be courageous and being out there and putting that story that's your own stuff and talking about, hey, here's how I feel about, um, I like what you said in the bio where it's not about no commitment, it's about commitment to the right person or the right decision for your career. Yeah. Like it's not about not doing it, but it's about doing it when it's right. Right. Um, So how do you handle the the need to be courageous, the need to be vulnerable if you're going to do anything creative? Well, I think um, it all depends on who you're writing with because that when you're writing by yourself, I feel like you don't have to be quite as courageous because you just go for it and if it comes out and you don't like it, like you're the only one that heard it. Right. But when you're in a co-write and you're trying to explain, you're like, I have this deep emotional thing that I want to try to <laughs> tell you about so we can write a song about it. And then, you know, people are just staring at you as you're spending like five minutes trying to explain what you feel and like the weird things you think about at night. Um, So I think that's really where sometimes the courage has to come out. Because once a song's a finished product, I think it can be easier to share. Yeah. But it's definitely in those times where you're like, I don't really know. I just feel like this. (laughs) And you're trying to like suss it out. Um, And oh my gosh, I've started recording some of like while we're songwriting just like randomly recording and you would not believe i mean the stuff that we try to say and do and then a lot of times it comes out of your mouth and you're just like no (laughs) no we cannot that's so bad um so yeah it's you definitely have to feel close to your co-writers because that's when you're most vulnerable is when you're just trying to walk through it yeah definitely and that is Something that's come up a lot when I, not just in interviews, but when I work with people is that need to, yes, you have to be vulnerable, but you better be vulnerable with the right person. Yeah. (laughs) Because that's, it is, it's a very intimate thing to sit there uh, and exactly like you say, and go, hey, here's, here's this thing that happened to me that's really personal. And they walk out of that room with that information about you. Right. Yeah. Is that something you still... Did you consciously have to work on that or are you more naturally that person who can do that? Um, I think I definitely, you know, first song, right, tend to maybe pick an easier topic and see how it goes. <laughs> I definitely don't just like jump into something crazy. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, everyone goes through stuff. And I think a lot of people have a lot of very similar experiences if they were to just straight up be honest and tell you mm-hmm. about them. So it's not it's not too bad. And when you're writing about relationships, it's like we've all been there. Yeah. You know, we've all had the good, bad, and the ugly. So 
it's it's not too bad to open up about. Yeah. Yeah. And when so the song's written, you did your vulnerable in the room or in the writer's room, and now you have to do your vulnerable out in the world because it's on iTunes and you're gonna have to play it live. How does it feel to release your your work? How does that still feel? Well, I love sharing my music with people. Um, the only time that it's awkward is like if I've written a song about a specific person and I don't oh, yeah. go around telling people like who, um, I'm not into that, but sometimes I feel like they probably know that it's about them, even though I would never like go openly say that. Um, but you know, if I wrote a song about someone in my hometown and then I'm playing in my hometown, I'm always kind of like, um, <laughs> like avoiding that. I just like wrote this about, you know, just, just randomly. Oh. <laughs> just, just but, this person, yeah, not like, here at all. Yeah, like you probably wouldn't know <laughs> remotely who this could be about. Um, so that's maybe the only time because I don't want to yeah. put people on blast. But you obviously write from experience. That's what we all do. Yeah. So you know, I just that's the only time that I'm kind of like, oh, sorry, but I did. I wrote this, and you. Mm, well, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the this is a slow business. As you know, um, everybody has their goals, but it, it, it takes a while to get there sometimes. Sometimes it takes a really long while to get there. How do you handle that need to stay patient about the things that you want to achieve? I don't feel like I have to be patient anymore because I am playing music full time and I have been for, gosh, about four years now, I guess. Yeah. So to me, like that's all I really want at the end of the day. I mean, I have a lot of big dreams, obviously, and a lot of things that I would like to accomplish, but really my main goal I've kind of already achieved and I'm just trying to maintain it. I like that. So for you, it's not been, cause it, you know, you had this really big year and it was, you know, red carpets at award shows and things like that. How did that, did that feel like what am I doing here? Like, this is so fun. Or did it feel like, oh, now I'm accepted? Or like, what, what is that like to, to be to walking those red carpets? It's a little bit mind blowing. It's a little bit surreal. Like you get all dressed up and that's all fun. But then you get there and you're like, oh, hey, Chris Young and like whoever else. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom is there and she's like freaking out and she's like trying to like secretly snap pictures of people. And I'm like, mom. Don't do that. Um, so that's, I think that's when it just gets a little weird is when you're standing there like talking to Dan and Shay and you're like, whoa, this is my life right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I think in a lot of ways I was made to do this. So I don't really feel like too out of place. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes it doesn't seem real. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're getting in the, you know, really gorgeous dresses and you're surrounded by all these people who you've you know seen on the charts for the past couple of years like that's that's yeah. kind of cool though yeah that's what's really cool and seeing the live performances too like at the mm -hmm. cmas the chris stapleton oh justin my God. yeah i was standing there and i had to remind myself that i was in public because i was just like <laughs> i mean it was incredible and being there and experiencing it live and just like being right in front of them instead of like watching it on tv i've never yeah. really been to a concert like that where I was that close to people and mm -hmm. it's a different experience like being right in the midst of it it's powerful yeah because I, I always think like there's cameras everywhere of course and especially the people who are in the in the front seats the artists it's always like okay you got, they, at any moment they can switch <laughs> yeah. to you like yeah at any moment whatever you're doing <laughs> They can suddenly decide, oh, camera three. Right, as Taylor Swift taught us all. Like, yeah, they will exactly. catch your and facial there expression. Is, there is your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For everybody. How do you filter feedback? Because you can't let everything in. Right. Because you would go crazy trying to please everybody. But you need to keep with, you know, the constructive criticism, the people who can help you get better. The how, who, how do you decide who falls in what group? Oh, um, that can be hard um, because you... You don't want to be a know-it-all, and you, you don't want to just be like, it's my way. But then at the same time, you do have to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I think what I've sort of come, I've come to this conclusion now that I'm working on new music, that I'm just going to make the music that I want to make. And beyond that, I'm going to let other people 
do their job. But when it comes to the music, I've kind of decided that, yes, I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to make the record that I want to make. I want it to sound how I want it to sound. Because my first two singles, while they're songs I believed in, and while I really liked them, I don't think that I was vocal enough in the studio about the sound that I wanted. And I want to change that going forward. Because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I'm proud of the music that I put out. And if other people don't like it, at least I like it. Um, but beyond that, I'm definitely glad to have the team around me that I have. And because they know so much. And yeah. um so yeah, I'm putting my foot down about just the music, and that's it. <laughs> that's a very good thing to do, because that leads into the next question, and I'm looking for a specific example. So you could go back to the idea of, of the first couple of songs that really liked being you, but it's not names, but situations where maybe you didn't stay as patient as you should have, or where you made a decision and then later on realized, yeah, that was not really the right thing to do. Um, what what got you into that situation? You know, what kind of, was it impatience? Was it uh, simply an experience? Like what, what are the kind of things that lead to you making decisions that you later realize were not, maybe not quite right? Well, I think, um, you know, we go into the studio and then they, which we felt like we were on a time schedule, you know, being my first DP and, yeah. you know, it's expensive being in the studio and you have all of these amazing players who have played on everything. And so you don't, you feel a little bit out of place. Like you don't want to step on their toes or tell them what to do. And, um, I feel like we went in and, you know, the tracks were beautiful. And I think I was just like, yes, this sounds good. Instead of being like, this sounds great, but I want my song to sound a little more like this. Right. Um, cause definitely they're great tracks. I just, I have this like sad sort of soul and, I really, I just feel like in my songs, we could have drawn that out, but we didn't. And we mm -hmm. just left them a little more just like country, country pop sounding. Yeah. Where um, for me, in my songs, there's maybe a little bit more of like that, I don't know, angst, like, t <laughs> like teenage angst, except I'm too old for it. I don't know <laughs> what to call it. Um, so I just, I really want to just kind of draw that out in the studio this next time. And yeah. I don't think you can really say that one's better than the other. And I think that my producer like made great sounding tracks. I just think at the end of the day, what I really wanted, I didn't choose to vocalize it. And I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. And then later I was like, you know, I would have been happier if I would have yeah. said something. So now that you know that of this is what I want, here's my boundaries and you're, you're working on new stuff. How do you now form that relationship with a new team? So they, they know, here's what I want, but I also want your feedback. I think it helps if you know exactly who you are going in and if you just choose to vocalize that. Because I've been able to sort of say, these are songs that I like. These are kind of the vibes I'm going for. This artist and this artist, if you put them together, like that's I want to just try to go for that and see what comes out. Yeah. So I think if you kind of set expectations in the beginning, that helps. And then something else that I'm doing is I actually want to work with multiple producers, and which is something people do in pop all the time, but in country not as often. And I just want to like work with different people and see what happens. And as I think sometimes you limit yourself if you, you know, if I only wrote songs with one other songwriter, there may be a great song that we wouldn't get out of us. But if yeah. I wrote with this person over here, maybe we would. So I'm excited about just exploring that and just exploring the creativity side. And everyone does it differently. You know, every yeah. producer works differently. Every songwriter works differently. So for me, kind of getting to see how people do it and learn from that helps yeah. too and kind of helps me figure out my process. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And the um, the future. So what is is it? Let's focus on a record. Is it let's... Because you're... You're, you're a road person. <laughs> yeah. That's where you live. I um, know. <laughs> you're so strong there. So how do you see what what's your focus going to be? Like, are you going to, okay, now I really have to become an album artist for a little while? Or is it, no, nope, I'm still out there as much as possible? I think I have to become an album artist or else it's not going to get done. And that's been really hard because, you know, this first single came out 
and people fell in love with it and I started being on the road and then I was on the road for six months and then the single went top 20 and then all of a sudden it was like we really need to follow this up because people are so excited about you and then I was like wait a minute we don't have a record like (laughs) (laughs) we forgot we forgot to write songs um well you had no time you know that's 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 the struggle because if you're out there all the time you're living all the experiences but you have no time to sit down and write about them right yeah so that's what I think I kind of have to force myself a little bit to like get into that headspace because I like to go and I like to travel and be on the road and I love to play shows and like I just like meeting fans and Mm -hmm. that's what I am really passionate about and yeah I write songs too but like it can take a minute to get into that creative headspace. And then I spend three days in Nashville and I'm like, what do I do? Where do I go? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Three days in one place? No. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> well, and on, and it's, it's this, um, like we did last year, but I'm, I'm interested in seeing if the answer is still the same. <laughs> my, my final question is the, the, that soundtrack to your life. If you're putting together a soundtrack to your life, stuff that, you know, songs that were with you as you were growing up, things that songs that are important to you. What's what makes the record? I mean, it's always been Shadaisy. That I think this is probably what I said last year. That <laughs> yeah. knock on the sky. You record. still agree with yourself? Yeah, <laughs> I like. If I could only have one CD for the rest of my life, it would be that one. Um, and then the day to day is. Oh, I mean, that's just changing. Like a song will come out, and I'll be obsessed with it. Right now, I'm obsessed with that song here by Alessia Cara. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've been at a party and been like, "What am I doing here?" So I'm like, "Yes," and that, <laughs> and just the vibe. Like that's the kind of song that I love. Like it's grooving, but it's kind of dark, and it's it's not like it's sad, but it definitely has like yeah. some real emotion to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.